Welcome to notes 7.4. Last time in the notes, we talked about the Pythagorean theorem, right, which you will remember is c squared equals a squared plus b squared. And today we're going to talk about special right triangles. And we're going to use the Pythagorean theorem to see if you can figure out what I'm talking about when I talk about special right triangles. So um, take this triangle here, and I want you to find the missing side please make sure that all your answers today are in simplest radical form. So we already know that side A is 6, and we know that C is 6 radical 2, so please go ahead and use the Pythagorean theorem to find out what B is. Go ahead and do that, and come back when you have your answer. Hit pause now. All right, you should have gotten that B is also 6. Okay, and, you know, let's just check that out for a second. So we got 6 squared plus b squared equals 6 radical 2 quantity squared. Okay, so 36 plus b squared equals, remember the way we solve these, or we distribute the square, and these two undo each other. So we would have wound up with 36 plus b squared equals 36 times 2. So 36 plus b squared equals 72, which means that b squared equals 36, and b equals 6. All right, in this next triangle right here, we've got a is 7, b is 7. I need you to use the Pythagorean theorem and tell me what c is. So go ahead and do that and come back when you have your answer. Hit pause now. All right, in this case, you should have gotten that C equals 7 radical 2. One more triangle. In this case, C is 3 radical 2, and we need to know what A and B are. Now, here's the deal. All these triangles that we've been doing so far, they've been 45. If that one's 45, then this one must also be 45. So these are, if my base angles are congruent, and then the sides opposite them are congruent. These are isosceles triangles. So whatever A is, B is also, um, which means that A squared plus B squared equals 3 radical 2 quantity squared. So A squared plus B squared equals 9 times 2. And these are really both X, right? So we get X squared plus X squared equals 18, 2 X squared equals 18, which means that x squared equals 9, and each of these, therefore, must equal 3. So every single time that we've done this, our pattern has been the two legs are the same length, and the hypotenuse is radical 2 times the leg. So that is the pattern for a 45, 45, 90 right triangle. That is what I want you to memorize, that the legs both legs are x, and the hypotenuse, hypotenuse is x radical 2. Okay, let's talk about a different kind of right triangle. So now we have a right triangle in which one of the angles is 30 degrees, which means the other angle must be 60 degrees. Okay, and let's see if we can figure out what b is here. So 4 squared plus b squared equals 8 squared. 16 plus b squared equals 64, which means that b squared equals 48. Take the square root of both sides. And what is the simplest radical form of b? Well, 48 is 16 times 3. And when I take the square root of 16, I get 4. So I get 4 radical 3 for my answer. So this is 4, this is 4 radical 3, and this one was 8. All right, I would like you guys to do this one all by yourself. Figure out for me what A is. We know that B is 6 radical 3, and we know that C is 12. Please come back when you have your answer. Hit pause now. Right, you should have gotten that A equals 6. One more 30, 60, 90 right triangle. A is 5, B is 5, radical 3. I need you to solve for C. Hit pause now. 
all right, you should have gotten that C equals 10. So every single time we've done this, there has been a pattern. And the pattern has been that in order to get the long leg, I multiply the short leg by the square root of 3. And in order to get the hypotenuse, I multiply the short leg by 2. So the pattern for my 30, 60, 90 triangle is if my short leg is x, that would be the leg opposite 30 degree angle, then the leg opposite the 60 degree angle is going to be x radical 3, and the hypotenuse is going to be 2x. x, x radical 3, 2x. That is my pattern for a 30, 60, 90 right triangle. So let's restate that for emphasis. In a 45, 45, 90 degree triangle, the hypotenuse is square root of 2 as long as the leg. Hypotenuse is square root of 2 times the leg. So the extended ratio, you remember our old friend, the extended ratio from last unit is 1, 1, radical 2, or as I like to say it, x, x, x radical 2, right? Because we like, we're going to make some tables. And then when we do the same thing for our 30, 60, 90, the hypotenuse is going to be twice as long as the shorter leg, and the longer legs is square root of 3 times as long as the shorter leg. So hypotenuse, 2 times shorter leg, longer leg, shorter leg times square root of 3. So this is what they give you for the extended ratio. Again, my preference for the extended ratio is x, x radical 3, and then 2x. Why does it matter? Well, first off, it keeps you from having to do the Pythagorean theorem. If you recognize that you have either a 30, 60, 90 right triangle or a 45, 45, 90 right triangle, and you know the sides, then you don't have to use the Pythagorean theorem to find the missing side. Also, you only need to know one side length in order to be able to find the other two side lengths, which you can't do when you have just a regular right triangle. All right, so let's run through some examples. When you make a guitar pick, for some reason, that resembles an equilateral triangle with side lengths of 32 millimeters, what is the approximate height of the pick? Okay, so if it's an equilateral triangle, then all the sides are congruent, and more importantly for our purposes, all of the um, angles are congruent. Okay, so we've got sides of 32, 32, 32, and we need to know the height. Well, when I draw my altitude right here, what I have in fact formed right here, this angle measures 30, this, I'm sorry, 60, this one measures 90, which means this one must measure 30. So I have a 30, 60, 90 right triangle going on. So my pattern's going to apply. Um, this side has been divided into congruent parts, so this is 16. Well, my pattern for a 30, 60, 90 right triangle is x, x radical 3, 2x. And I know that my short leg, the one opposite the 30 degree angle, is 16. And my long leg, I'm sorry, my hypotenuse is 32. So my long leg is going to be whatever x is times radical 3, 16 radical 3. Of course, they ask us for the approximate height of the pick, which means we're going to go ahead and actually multiply 16 times radical 3. And when you do that, you get 27 0.7 millimeters. And that's how you use the 30, 60, 90 pattern in order to solve a problem. I would like you to use it to find the values of x and y in this triangle. Actually, hang on a second. Now that I'm looking at it, let's go through this one together. Okay, so 30, 60, 90, x, x radical 3, 2x. Now, the one that we know is the leg that is opposite the 60 degree angle, which means that this is the side that we know in our pattern. We know that the long leg is 8. So the way you have to solve problems like this, where you know that the long leg is 8, is you have to set these two equal to each other. x radical 3 equals 8. And then you have to solve for x. All right, so we do that by dividing by the square root of 3. 8 divided by the square root of 3. Now, this says leave answers in most exact form. Well, most exact form means simplest radical form, which means this is fabulous, except you're not allowed to leave a radical in the denominator of a fraction. That's against the rules in math, which means that we have to rationalize the denominator. What does that mean? Well, if you remember, it's multiplying by 1 
only in this case, the one that we're multiplying by is the square root of 3 over the square root of 3. What that does for us is in the numerator of my fraction, I take these two, I multiply them together, and I get 8 radical 3, because I can't multiply two things that are unlike one that's outside a radical and one that's underneath a radical, so they just have to stay like that. Well, the square root of 3 times the square root of 3 is the square root of 9, and the square root of 9 is 3. So that is my answer in simplest radical form, and that is what x is. x is 8 radical 3 over 3, which means that my long, or my hypotenuse, which is y, is twice x. So I just take this and I multiply it by 2. When I multiply it by 2, all I'm multiplying by 2 is the top of the fraction, because I'm really multiplying by 2 over 1. And so 2 times 8 is 16, so I get 16 radical 3 over 3. So these are my two answers to my problem. So when the piece that you know is the long leg of the triangle, and it's a whole number, you are going to get answers that look something like this, that are some kind of radical and possibly even in fraction form. Just keep that in mind. All right, last example on this page. We've got windshield wipers. A car is turned off while well, the windshield wipers are moving. I don't know why you do that, but okay, let's go with it. And the 24-inch windshield wipers stop making a 60-degree angle with the bottom of the windshield. So if we draw that picture, um, I've got that diagonal is my windshield wiper, and they told us that that was 24. And they said that the angle with the bottom of the windshield was 60 degrees. So there's my 60 degree angle. There's my right angle. And they want to know how far from the bottom of the windshield are the ends of the wipers. Well, here's the thing that they're looking for. They're looking for the side opposite of the 60 degree angle. So I would like you to go ahead and solve this problem for me. Come back when you have the right answer. Hit pause now. Okay. You should have gotten 12 radical 3. Um, so 12 radical 3 inches, although when we're actually dealing with real world units, it's sometimes a good idea to go ahead and give the approximate answer. So I think we're talking about approximately 20.8 inches. And that is how you use the pattern. Let's look real quickly at these uh, 45, 45, 90 triangles. Uh, remember my pattern for the 45, 45, 90 is x, x, x radical 2. So the hypotenuse is just radical 2 times the leg. Well, in this case, if my leg is 4, my hypotenuse is going to be 4 radical 2. In this case, I know my hypotenuse, 3 radical 2. So 3 radical 2, which means my leg is, is whatever the thing is multiplied by radical 2. So my leg is 3, and that's how you do the 45, 45, 90. I would like you do, to do the remainder of these triangles in your notes check. Uh, one thing I want to point out is this marking right here does not mean 45. It means that we're talking about 45 degrees. For some reason, the printer sometimes, when you convert it to a PDF, changes the degree symbol to an exclamation point. So don't get too excited. All right, so please do the remainder of those triangles in your notes check and bring any questions that you have to class. Thanks.